This is a Roman catapult. Three, two, one! I like to build things. For example, I've built these planter boxes. This desk, which my wife said would be too small, and I didn't believe her, so I still used it as a computer desk. And then it was too small, so now it's the entryway table. And that made me build this desk. My, oh my, what a beautiful desk it is. I also built this absolutely astonishing Live Edge Ashwood coffee table. No, this isn't a shameless plug, and yes, all you ladies should be jealous of my wife. It's okay. Towards the beginning of the year, I posted this to TikTok. So I'm a social studies teacher, and we're getting to the point where we're almost in medieval Europe, and I'm, I'm really tempted to build a, a catapult that launches tennis balls to bring into class. This, this isn't a good idea, right? Someone tell me it's not a good idea. The response was overwhelmingly in favor. We did it. It's been approved. In fact, my vice principal said she kind of wants to see a big one chucking huge things in the parking lot. We're gonna do it? January. Except then I remembered that I live in Indianapolis, and that doing it in January was a stupid idea. So we did it at the end of October. But before I get to that, let's talk about the catapult itself and how I made it. The first thing you always want to do when you're building something that's big and probably going to be expensive is make a smaller, scale model version of it. That way, if anything goes wrong, you're okay. You're not losing a whole lot of money. And that's what I'm doing right here. This cost me about 10, maybe 15 dollars to build and it took me about 45 minutes to put it all together. Now it probably would have cost me a little bit more if I had to buy the paracord that I used for the torsion bundle, and I'll talk about what that is in a minute, but because I had it on hand, I was able to save a little bit of money. And yes, before you ask, that is a beard. Now there's two types of catapults that I could be building right here. There's what's called a mangonel and an onager. Onagers are a bit more common, they're a bit more useful, they have a sling at the end, and they're named onager for the Greek word meaning wild ass or wild donkey, because when they have enough tension, they kick just like a wild donkey. What I'm building here is a mangonel, which is something that has a cup or a basket or a flat side on the arm, and that's what holds and launches the projectile. So the basic parts you'll need for a catapult are a frame that actually holds everything together, that's where the arm can be held, a torsion bundle that can be twisted and turned, and that's where you get your power, and then you need your throwing arm. This can have a sling on it, it can have a cup on it, it can just be flat, but the idea is that it's something that's easy enough for the tension you're going to build to throw that throwing arm. If it's too heavy, it's not going to be able to use that tension very properly, and if it's too light, you might snap your throwing arm. I'm building everything out of pine, and there are some problems with that that I discovered later on, but for now, it did the job. What you're looking at here is called a torsion bundle. It's something that creates a torsion engine, which is this overall siege weapon that is powered by torsion. Basically, it's when you take rope and you twist it, and that twisting creates your power. In this case, you'll notice that both sides of this rope are twisted forward, with this throwing arm stuck in the middle, preventing it from actually twisting too far. Now, as it hits the brace up above, it holds still and creates this potential energy that can be released when we let the arm go. So a common misconception is that catapults were used to take down buildings and walls. The thing is, it's just, it's just not how it would really work. I mean, if you think about it, even the big ones of these are going to be throwing things about the same size as bowling balls. And if you take a bowling ball and throw it at a wall that's about two to four feet thick of solid stone, are you going to bring that wall down? I mean, maybe if you launch enough rocks at it, but by the time you do that, you're going to be dead. No, what these were used for, and this is brilliant, would be to launch at other people. They wouldn't just put a single projectile most of the time. They would have a bunch of smaller projectiles, usually about the size of a baseball. That way when they launch it, it's kind of like a shotgun effect, and it would just land among the entire rank of enemies. And I know that doesn't seem as cool as if we're in Lord of the Rings and they're launching these giant rocks at orcs and at people and all this kind of stuff, but it's just, it's just not really realistic. Trebuchets come along much later, closer to the Crusades and the Hundred Years' War, and those are able to launch significantly higher payloads 
significantly further. But when you think about it, I mean, you don't really need to be launching these giant things if you're going to be trying to hit people. If you launch a two to three pound rock the size of a baseball and it hits someone in the head, they're down for the count. You're still gonna do a ton of damage. So, were catapults used in warfare? Yes. Were they used to take down buildings and walls? Very, very rarely. Were they still very effective siege weapons to launch towards the enemy? Yes. Very much so. Now, traditionally catapults are made out of hardwoods because they're stronger. I, being a teacher, had to go for the cheaper option, pine. And also, since this was a small version that I didn't care about lasting very long, I wasn't worried about if it broke or not. With all that in mind, I want you to listen for the reason why you shouldn't build your catapult out of pine. Hear that creaking? That's not good. It's a mixture of the wooden epizygous, or the twisting part, rubbing against the wood, and the actual wood itself creaking and cracking under pressure. You can even see here how it's bowing inwards. That is not ideal. But even with all those problems, this thing was launching tiny green cherry tomatoes, like, into my neighbor's backyard. Don't worry, no one lives there. I think. I took this opportunity to look for flaws in my design, and one thing I noticed is that my brace supports needed to be inside the frame, because if they were on the outside, they got in the way of me being able to twist. And this was going to come in very handy when I had a huge one, because I would need it to be as easy as possible to twist especially if it was gonna be 10 times more powerful. So a few weeks later, I built the frame, added some supports. You can see it right here next to my car for size comparison. Then I drilled the holes and added the torsion bundle with a throwing arm I made from two by fours. Looking back, I probably would have made it something smaller or lighter. Don't know how I would fix this problem, but it was just too heavy. That being said, here is the first snap. Now, there's a lot of things to consider when you're building a catapult of this style, and a big one is what kind of rope you're going to use. I initially started using this polypropylene climbing rope, which isn't perfect, but it's cheap. And what's good about it is that you have this constant force all the way through. But that's also the bane of its use. Because it's so elastic, you do get that constant force, but you trade it off for less force overall. Now this worked just fine in the smaller one. The smaller one that I made is able to launch extremely far for its size. The bigger one I made, it didn't work so well. When all is said and done, I ended up going with a natural hemp style rope. On one hand, you get a lot more force out of it, but on the other hand, it's all at the beginning of that jerk. As it moves up, it slows down, and you lose some of that energy in the swing. Now I ran into quite a few problems with this build still, and I think it's because I was using pine. Pine is very, very soft, and it just wasn't able to hold up under the immense amount of pressure I needed to put this on in order to actually launch somewhat effectively. By the end of the first night of my test launches, I could see visible cracks in my frame. <laughs> that's, that's not good, it wasn't going to hold up. I ended up having to do a late night emergency run to Home Depot, replace those two sides, get spare parts cut and prepared, and then spend the next morning really beefing up the structure of my catapult to make it more likely to last through the day. I ended up not being able to crank it up all the way just because I didn't want it to break and leave the rest of the kids who were supposed to come see this cool presentation miss out on everything. And so I will readily admit that it did not launch as far as I really wanted it to launch. That being said, we still had a good amount of fun. We were able to get several good launches. In the last one of the day, we were able to crank it up as high as we possibly could without breaking it. Three, and got a pretty good two, launch at it. One.